Hello, my name is Benjamin Biu, and I am a PhD student at the Centre for Medical Image Computing at University College London. In this video, I present a learning strategy that we developed with Eugenio Iglesias and Adrian Delca for segmentation of brain MRI scans of any contrast without having to retrain for new modalities. So just as a little reminder, segmentation starts with an image to which we apply a segmentation method in order to retrieve delineations for a given set of regions of interest. Now, segmentation is a key task in medical image processing because it is a prerequisite for a wide array of analyses such as volumetry, morphology, or connectivity. In this talk, we focus on segmentation of brain MRI scans for which we have four popular classes of methods. The first one is manual segmentation, which can be applied to segment any image. However, this is extremely time-consuming, and that's why people started to look into automated methods. The first approach is multi-atlas segmentation, where the segmentation of a test scan is obtained by registering several atlases to it. Although it was initially designed for unimodal purposes, multi-atlas segmentation can be extended to multi-contrasts by using cross-modality metrics, like mutual information. But this version of multi-atlas segmentation never became popular, because contrast independence is the typical application of Bayesian segmentation, which is fully agnostic if you use it with an unsupervised likelihood model. Also, Bayesian segmentation is much faster than multi-atlas segmentation, reducing the runtime from several hours to tens of minutes. The modern segmentation literature now focuses on supervised convolutional neural networks, which are extremely fast at test time since you can retrieve a segmentation in seconds. But the problem is that they generalize poorly to new modalities. So the question is, can we take those fast CNNs and make them modality agnostic without having to retrain for new contrasts? As an example, if you take a T1 image and run it through a network that was trained on T1 images in a supervised fashion, you obtain a good segmentation. But if you take an image of another modality, for example a T2, and run it through the same network, you obtain a segmentation of poor quality. A first solution to this problem would be to train a different model for each modality that you have. This can be extended in a straightforward way by combining all those models into a single one that would be trained on all available contrasts. However, all these supervised methods present the same problems. The first one is that they are extremely sensitive to intensity distributions. As such, they only work on modalities they were trained with. For instance, the previous examples couldn't be applied to segment proton density or flare scans. Similarly, they are sensitive to different levels of preprocessing, like bias field correction or school stripping. And finally, they require supervised training data for all the contrast and preprocessing types that you want to be able to segment, which quickly becomes problematic if you want your model to adapt to a wide range of data without retraining. The solution that we propose in this work is to train a network with synthetic data instead of real data. Ideally, the synthetic images would cover all the variability that is observed in brain MRI scans. As a result, you could input an image of any contrast and any preprocessing type, and you would obtain a good segmentation for it. But now the question is, what would this synthetic data look like, and how would we obtain it? First of all, our generative model starts with a set of anatomical segmentations, and I insist on the fact that we don't need images, only segmentations. From those, we generate a lot of images with corresponding segmentations. Crucially, those images are of random contrast. Moreover, for each image, we apply a random subset of preprocessing operations, like bias field correction, school stripping, or background removal. Finally, we take all these images and train a network with them in a supervised fashion. The idea behind this framework is that if the network learns to segment these images of random contrast, it wouldn't be biased towards any real modality, and therefore it could be applied to any brain MRI scan. We call this method SYNSEG. Let us now dive into the methods, and first, the generative model. The generative model is borrowed from Bayesian segmentation. Let us start simple with the synthesis of a T1 contrast. First, we randomly select a label map among the training segmentations 
and we spatially deform it in 3D to augment the training data. Then, we generate a first synthetic image by sampling a Gaussian mixture model conditioned on the deform label map. This simply means that the intensities of each label are sampled from a Gaussian distribution of given mean and variance. The obtained image is subsequently blurred in order to introduce spatial correlation between neighboring voxels and to mimic partial volume effects. Finally, the model is completed by applying a bias field and further intensity augmentations. So this is how we generate a T1 contrast. If we now wish to generate an image of random contrast, like we did to train Sinseg, we apply the exact same steps, except that instead of sampling a Gaussian mixture model of given means and variances, we now sample these means and variances from uniform distribution of wide range. In most cases, the results are highly unrealistic. For instance, here we have different intensities for the right and left sides, and sometimes you have very little contrast between structures, like here between the left cortex and the CSF. But this is our hypothesis. Can the network learn more robust features with images of totally random contrast? This is an overview of how we train SINSEC. Importantly, the data generation happens on the fly, so the network is never exposed twice to the same contrast. A training step starts by randomly selecting a label map among the training segmentations. We then input it into the image generative model in order to retrieve an image of random contrast and its corresponding segmentation. Then, we take this image and run it through the network in order to obtain the prediction. In this work, we use the UNET architecture, but this could be replaced with any segmentation network. The prediction is then compared to the ground truth by computing the average size loss for a given set of regions of interest. Based on this loss, we finally use the backpropagation algorithm to update the weights of the network in order to improve the quality of segmentations over training. Let us now look at how we evaluate this method. In total, we use four datasets of real images. The first one contains 3091 scans. For the first half, we only keep the segmentations to train our model, and the second half is held out for testing. All the other datasets are only used for testing. We call the second dataset T1 mix because it contains 1000 heterogeneous T1 scans from seven sub datasets. Then there is FSM with T1 scans and two new contrasts, T2 and a sequence typically used in deep brain stimulation that we call here DBS. The last dataset contains T1 and proton density scans. Moreover, all the images of this dataset are school strips, which enables us to evaluate our model against school strip data. In our experiments, we compare four competing methods. The first one is a supervised network trained with real T1 scans, to which we apply the same spatial and intensity augmentation as for SINSEG. Then, we evaluate the performance of SAMSEG, which is an implementation of the modality agnostic Bayesian segmentation. Of course, we assess our method, SINSEG. And finally, we evaluate a variant of our method that we call SINSEG rule. This is still a single model, it is still trained with synthetic data, but now the generated images have realistic contrast instead of random contrast. Importantly, these contrasts were directly estimated from the testing images, so in a sense, this method is tuned to the testing data. Overall, this variant enables us to compare the results obtained by sampling random contrast against realistic contrast. We now report the dice scores obtained by the competing methods, and higher is better. We start with the T1 baseline, which obtains really good scores for images similar to its training data. However, the results fluctuate a lot when it is tested against scans of slightly different intensity distributions, even though these scans are still T1 and even though we apply aggressive data augmentation. I also highlight that the T1 baseline couldn't be applied to school strip data, even T1, or to any non-T1 modalities. In comparison, SAMSEC does very well for all datasets and is much more constant than the T1 baseline. We verify that it is modality agnostic and can segment school strip data. Here are the results for SINSEC, and we can see that it works. Despite it has never seen real images during training, it is now able to accurately segment them regardless of their contrast. Overall, SINSEC obtains similar scores to SAMSEG, sometimes a bit higher and sometimes a bit lower, 
But if we look at the non-T1 modalities, we can see that Syntec consistently outperforms Samsung while running three orders of magnitude faster. We believe there are two reasons why Syntec does well. First, it has been exposed to high variability during training by sampling a different random contrast at each millibatch, and therefore, it better generalizes at test time. And second, the training examples are perfectly aligned with their corresponding segmentation, because images were directly generated from label maps. Therefore, Synsec doesn't suffer from segmentation mistakes that we typically have when training a network with real images and manual delineations. If we now look at the results of Synsec rule, we see that it is outperformed by Synsec for all datasets. This result may at first be counterintuitive, because as we saw, Synsec rule was tuned to mimic the contrast of the testing data. But we think this shows that augmenting data beyond realistic measures like we did by sampling this random contrast, enables networks to learn more robust features that do not rely on absolute intensities, and thus to better generalize during testing. Let us now look at some segmentation examples, and we start here with two T1 scans. First, we show the ground truth for comparison. We see that the T1 baseline does really well on images similar to its training data, but quickly degrades on images of slightly different intensity distribution. This is particularly observed for the cerebellum and most of the deeper structures, like the pallidum, which is inexistent in this segmentation. These are the results obtained by Samseg and Synseg. We see that these segmentations are quite similar and overall quite good, even if there are some mistakes here and there at different locations. Finally, we see that Synseg rule outputs segmentations of lower quality, especially for the outer structures and the cortex, which has little contrast. Interestingly, Synsec doesn't make the same mistakes, and this can be explained by the fact that its training examples sometimes yield very little contrast, because we randomly sample the intensities, and therefore, Synsec is already accustomed to segmenting data, presenting little or no contrast. We now show results for T2 and proton density scans. These are the ground truth segmentations, and of course, the T1 baseline couldn't be applied. If we now look at the segmentations obtained by Samseg, we see that they are still good, but maybe a bit worse than the previous T1 examples. In comparison, Synseg produces segmentations of the same quality than before, and is now slightly better than Samseg. Finally, we can see that Synseg rule improved a bit compared to the T1 examples, but is still clearly outperformed by Synseg. Let us go over some key points from this presentation. First, we have achieved fast contrast agnostic segmentation of brain MRI scans, and this without having to retrain for any new modality. Then, Synsec doesn't require preprocessing, and moreover, it can adapt to images preprocessed at different levels. Also, the presented model only requires a set of anatomical segmentations and doesn't necessitate any images to be trained. In agreement with several recent papers, we showed that augmenting the training data beyond realistic measures helped the network to better generalize at test time. The idea of using a generative model to control the training data opens up a number of interesting research directions. So far, we have achieved accurate segmentation of research quality scans. Another direction that we recently explored is to segment clinical acquisitions with six slices. This task is extremely challenging because of the partial volume effect, which results in voxel intensities that are not necessarily representative of the underlying tissues. We tackle this problem by accommodating the Synsec framework to model partial volume effects in anisotropic data. The results show that this new model is able to accurately segment clinical acquisitions at high resolution. I want to thank our founding bodies, including the EPSRC and ERC. I also want to thank my two supervisors for this work, Eugenio Iglesias and Adrian Dalka, as well as our collaborators, Douglas Grieve, Kun van Liput, and Bruce Fischel. I want to finish this presentation by pointing to some useful links. The first one is the paper directly related to this presentation. The second one is the link to the follow-up work that we did for segmentation of scans with partial volume effects. The last two links will direct you to the code used for this work. The first repository contains code for the generative model, which was already applied to contrast agnostic registration. The second link will enable you to either use Synseg or retrain your own model. I want to emphasize that we put a lot of effort to make these tools user-friendly, and we also provide a lot of tutorials. 
So thank you for watching this presentation, and I hope you will visit these links.